system looks like this. This is a graphical representation of the system. We now have two machines that the uh, reading from Q5. And the effect of these two machines is the fact that we, are now, we now have a zero length Q at the end of our 1,000 iterations on Q5. We have a lower but overall higher uh, throughput on the last stage, so lower when looking at a single machine, but higher when looking at the uh, summation of the, of the machine utilization, which means that we are doing a good thing. So if you, if you sum this up, you get around 110%. It means that one machine would not be enough to process all the elements coming in without building up a queue, which matches our expectation. But then we can see there's this uh, possibly unexpected queue uh, forming outside of, uh, of, um, of M2. Let's go and look at the diagram for a second. So M2 is here. It's pushing elements into Q4. And then there's a queue building up here. Let's figure out why that's the case. So when machine 3 reads elements from Q4, uh, in order to process elements from Q4, it also has to have a corresponding element on the Q3 uh, side of things. Okay, something is, is starting to starting to uh, surface here, right? So maybe uh, the reason why we still have a queue forming up in Q4 is that not that machine 3 is not fast enough, but that machine 3 has to wait for elements to come from Q3, and because of that it's blocking on the on the Q4 side. So if that's the case, what is the problem from Q3 going upstream? Is it that machine one is not fast enough in the process, in the processing, or is that X is not generating enough elements? Now, if we look at the utilization uh, utilization uh, column on the on the table, what we can see is that machine machine one is only utilized for 18% of the time. What that tells you is the fact that we don't need an extra machine or extra machine power at that particular stage in the processing. What this means is that machine one is taking less Fewer, fewer items that, than what it can actually handle. So what this boils down to is the fact that X is not generating items uh, fast enough for Q3, uh, for Q3 to um, have enough elements to cope with the, with the traffic coming from the Y side of the, of the pipeline. So to recap, we noticed that we had a Q forming in Q5 and in Q4. We thought, well, maybe if we increase the, the processing power at the end of our system, then we're gonna be seeing a lower number of elements queued up. We did see a decrease in the number of elements queued up in Q5, but Q4 remains a bit of a bottleneck in our system. And by looking at the data we have, we figured out that it must be because we don't have enough elements coming in in Q3 which is be not because machine one is not processing fast enough, and that we can say because the utilization rate for M1 is very low, but it's because X is not producing enough elements. Now, how do we validate our assumptions without having to build a new piece of our factory and, and uh, running the thing in real time? Well, we can just try and tweak the, um, the, this, the, the probability distribution that um, generate that, that we use to sample uh, values from this from the from the uh, X generator. Uh, for example, what we could do is we could make the generation of elements from uh, and the and the input of, of the system in on the X side a bit faster. For example, if we reduce the number the maximum uh, duration of um, uh, the maximum maximum interval time between two X elements. So I'm going from 0.7 as the maximum to 0.6. Again, it's not like that. Um, uh, it's just to validate our assumption that the problem is indeed the fact that we're not generating uh, enough x's. What I expect to see when I run the simulation is for the M1 utilization rate to go up, and for the M2 uh, and for the Q at the output of M2 to go down a bit. And if that's not the case in the first simulation, we can we can run a few. Okay, seems like things did go uh, our way a bit. Let's compare the data. So M1 utilization went from 18% to 19%, so not a massive, almost 20%, not a massive difference. But if you look at the Q forming on M2, at the output of M2, that's now 27. Let's see if we were just lucky or if there's an actual pattern there. Okay, this time we have 
28 elements queuing up on the exit at the output of M1, so in Q3, and only one in Q4. But this is also very interesting, right? So the processing rate of M1 went up, so it's 20%. And when the rate is uh, utilization rate is 20%, then it seems that at this point uh, the X stream starts producing more elements than, than Y does. So that's where you're going to see a Q. Let's run the simulation again. Okay, again, uh, uh, utilization rate very close to 20%, and we have 15 elements waiting to be processed, but now we are we, we caught up with the production of, uh, of Y. So we can now go to uh, our um, our director in our in our workplace and say, hey, if we want to streamline our, our production line, we need to get faster at generating uh, pieces of type X. And we can invest our money on that particular stage of our, of our pipeline because we know that that's uh, the, the cause of the, of the bottleneck, of the slowdown. And this is really uh, all there is to it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this session.